I am so excited to get this ATV camp trailer all finished up. Today, I'm gonna get started on a project that I am really excited about. In part one, I pulled the trailer out of the field, got it into the shop, and flipped the axle under the leaf springs to get a free four inch lift. Then in part two, it was time for a test ride. I wanted to make sure the trailer seemed like it would work off-road before I put any more time or money into the project. Part three is when I really started diving into the project. First up was disassembly and cutting out as much extra weight as possible. Then I started rebuilding the suspension, axle, and got some new wheels and tires. And that brings us to today. The wheel spacers came in, so I'm gonna take these, put them on there. Gonna get the trailer resting on the springs so it's like at a loaded position before I install the shocks. shock setup. I'm gonna have to go up through the floor basically of the trailer which kind of sucks but the shocks are fully mounted. They turned out pretty good. Definitely more of an angle than is ideal but there is so little space there to work with. It's still gonna be better than having nothing. So the next thing to do is put on a floor, which I was originally gonna do in sheet metal, but it turns out sheet metal is really expensive. So instead, I am gonna do a plywood floor. It'll be fully, completely sealed, so no matter how wet it gets, it's not gonna warp or anything. This is what I'm using. It's gonna be plenty strong. This side's actually fairly smooth, so I may just sand that down a little bit and then, you know, I'll spray some kind of liner on it. All right, with that piece all cut out, now I'm just gonna sand it, prime it, and install it. I almost forgot, I gotta do a test fitting. That's definitely gonna work. All I need to do is drill out the spots for those bolts. I got it all set in, got the holes cut out for the shock mount bolts. And now I'm ready to just go ahead and prime it and get it all nice and finished. Well, I just gave the floor the last coating of undercoat right there. So the next thing to do is take these back and front pieces and cut them off so they'll be even with these sides right here. I've already cut it in half to be the same height as the sides. And then the last thing I need to do is fill in some of these holes. So I have never welded in my life. Um, I just started practicing like three days ago. I'm gonna try to weld a filler piece in here. It's not structural. It's a part I feel very comfortable doing as my first piece. I'm gonna take it in the other room and we're gonna give welding a try for the first time ever. <laughs> oh boy. Definitely burned a gigantic hole there. Like burned the whole corner off. It's seriously all about learning, so I'm happy with learning on this piece. Well, the first weld is done. Looks like hot garbage, but you know what? It's holding. For my first actual weld, you know what? It is totally good enough for me. I'm so excited. It is time for final assembly. Now we're going to Arizona in two weeks. So I gotta get this thing done right now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put some silicone around some of the openings. I don't want any water to be able to get up into the trailer. I got the front and back walls primed and drying back there. So now I'm gonna put on the outside back wall. If you guys are enjoying this video, please hit that like button. It really helps us out. If you wanna see more of our videos, hit subscribe. There's basically two main things left for me to do. I need to sand and prep the entire trailer before putting the bed liner on, and I need to build a top. First coat is done. It honestly looks pretty thin and crappy, but they did say to put on a thin first coat, so 
I'll let it sit for a few hours and then come back for coat number two. Coat number two is on and it is looking a whole lot better. So once I get the inner walls in, I'll touch up all the little corners and stuff with a brush or with a spray can. I got a spray can of the stuff. I've got high hopes that this will hold up well to off-road abuse. Looking pretty good. So while the trailer is drying, I got the inner walls over here. I did one coat of rubberized undercoating and then one coat of the Herculiner or bed liner because that seemed to work really well on the trailer. And I want these walls to be as waterproof as possible. Next step is cleaning up and painting these fenders. Fenders are cleaned up, primers on. Luckily, I'm going to be able to reuse this hardware that I got clear back in part two. Both walls are installed and caulked. So it should be a nice dirt and water free storage box. It is time to measure for the top. a lot more silver than I was hoping for. I was going more for gray, but I think it'll turn out good. And hopefully the enamel finish will be nice and sturdy for the top of the trailer. This is the underside of the lid. I'm gonna spray it with the rubberized undercoating, same as is on the bottom of the trailer. No particular reason, just seems like it makes sense. Next thing I'm gonna start working on is the wiring. I'm gonna try fishing it through with this little wire. Ha! Finally. Push them together and then tape them together. And hopefully that will be enough. I got this spray on Herculiner bed liner. I'm gonna use it to basically finish up all the little areas that were too hard to get to with the roller. These LED taillights from Harbor Freight were cheap and installed really quickly. They easily pressed into the existing taillight openings. Alrighty, time to put on these bright blue patriotic fenders. After getting the fenders bolted on, I installed some stick-on weather stripping I bought at AutoZone. It went on really easily and had a surprisingly strong hold. Right, time to do a little test to see how well this is gonna stick. Shoot. All right, I think we're good to go. I just realized, I don't think I recorded this at all, you guys. I wired up some USB plugs. Let's go plug it in and hope it works. So the CF Moto comes pre-wired for a trailer, but not quite. You have to get a harness that hooks up there. And for this video, I partnered with CFMotoUSAparts.com. They've got a ton of parts and accessories for CF Motos. So let's get this wiring harness installed. This is it, it's super simple. Basically you get three bolts that go through there. This looks like it's pre-threaded. Easy peasy. I'm just having a hard time getting a grip on that plug. But, there we go. So that's just like a wax filled plug that CF Moto put in to keep any dirt or grime from getting into the wiring harness, which is pretty cool. Okay, now I can put this wiring harness in and I'll just get it plugged up to start off. There we go, heard it click. All right, then let's get it lined up with the holes and get them screwed in. It is that easy. I'm all set up for trailer wiring. 
And then the other half of the equation here is the little pigtail that comes with the four-wheeler. So let's go into this direction. Oh yeah, nice. So the lid comes down, locks the pigtail on. Now I'm gonna pull the trailer up, test out the trailer wiring, see if I got it all hooked up correctly. Okay, we're gonna do a little time traveling here. I worked on the electrical for a few days and finally got it figured out. It ended up being a super simple problem. Initially, I had to rewire the pigtail connector that goes between the ATV and the trailer. For some reason, the one from CF Moto just wasn't correct. My problem for a few days was that I had the ground wire going from the trailer side to the wrong spot on the ATV. Once I got that fixed, the lights worked great. My phone is being charged now. I got the USB plugs working. The tail lights are way brighter. The brake lights are way brighter. I am super stoked, you guys. Here it is. These are the clasps I'll be using. They're gonna sit like this on the side of the trailer. four more times and then show you what the end product is like. I got all four corners done. The seals are looking really good. Super tight. I don't see any gaps or anything. So that is a good thing. Also, I missed some paint right there, but that's okay. And there. Oh, well. I'm taking the trailer out for the first test drive around the block. Let's hope nothing breaks. just came in today. I'm gonna take these legs and put them on here so the lid of the trailer will also be a table. Ha. And we go. So what I gotta figure out is the distance in here and just mount the legs inside that. metal roofing screws, not necessarily because they're the best thing in the world for this job, but because I had them and they're the right length. So that's pretty much it. All right, after all that, before I test it as a table, I wanna make sure it actually fits, which is, I think it's only about 50-50 at this point. Hey, all right, all right, it fits. I'm so excited, you guys. I'm gonna make sure I can hook them down everywhere. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Unfold the legs. Put in the leg extensions. <laughs> And then, guys, we got ourselves a camp table. Heck yes. 
Not the most stable thing in the world, but it's a surface we can cook on, eat on, whatever we want to do. That is so cool. So I'm going to take these plastic pieces that came with it, and we'll just mount each of the legs around the edges. Plenty of space for that. Perfect. Let's just do that three more times. There we go. They pop in and out, no problem. Next thing for me to do is mount my Rotopax gas can right back here somewhere. This is what the mount looks like. It looks just like the one up on my four wheeler. As I get close to finishing this project, I just want to tell you guys, thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me. If you guys want to help support the channel, go check out brosnotpros.com. That's our merchandise website. You can get Bro Not Pro shirts, Bro Build shirts, Bro hats, mugs, all kinds of stuff. If you want to go check it out, we would really appreciate it. I installed two water bottles, the exact same as the gas can. They're each two gallons, so I've got four gallons of water. This gas can's two and a half gallons. That one is three and a half gallons. So I got six gallons of extra fuel. And with those water cans, you guys, I am completely done. The trailer's finished. I can't tell you guys how excited I am. It's totally done. Now we get to go out and test it. I'm actually doing two tests. I'm gonna ride around here locally in the Owyhees, and then in one week, well, six days actually, with my brother-in-law and his cousin, we are going to Arizona to do the Arizona Peace Trail. So I'll definitely throw a few clips of that in this video. <sighs> what a good feeling, you guys. Loaded up and ready to go. Absolutely massive difference between the weight change in the trailer and then of course my upgraded ATV That was like nothing and like my brother and I were just talking about you really don't get a sense of how steep this hill is I mean, we're talking like a really good incline You can go back and watch part two if you want to see how the 500 did pulling the trailer up uh, Spinning out quite a bit lots of dust. It felt completely different coming up that like Like it was nothing really. I mean this thing just climbed right up the hill, no problem. We made it to the cabin and Ben's gonna make us some lunch. We are gonna head over to that cat weigh station, same one as before and see how much weight the trailer has lost. Originally, it was around 580 pounds, and my guess is today, my hope is that we're looking around 300 pounds. Well, I gotta say I'm a little disappointed. Right here, 460 pounds. So all that work and I only lost 123 pounds. I mean, that's a good amount of weight. 460 though, not too shabby. Just got back from the weigh station, it's pouring rain outside. This is a really good test to see how waterproof I made this. There's a lot of water beating on the top. Fingers crossed, hopefully there is no water inside. Yeah. 
There is not one single drop of water in here, you guys. Yes, it's waterproof. I'm so excited. If driving at 55 miles an hour, just slinging water into it, it didn't leak any water, I feel really good about our Arizona trip. I gashed up both tires. So this one I nailed the rim and then, I'm, oh, there's the, you guys can see it. There's a gash right there. Same thing on the other side, gashed it right there. The new 28s I think look really good. I just discovered some terrible news. Just literally snapped. And the spring, or the uh, the shock is also getting ready to just pop off because there's so much stress on it right now. Stay tuned for part five because I will be replacing the suspension and trying to cut some weight from the trailer.